My brother-in-law has a low miles late model Royal Enfield Bullet 500 and recently offered to let me borrow it for two weeks if I fixed a minor electrical issue for him. I'm not one to say no when offered a free motorcycle no matter what it is, so it gave me a chance to put it through its paces for you, the readers. Unfortunately, though the bike looks spectacular, its performance leaves something to be desired. If you are already familiar with the history of Royal Enfield, and the modern Indian versions, just skip ahead a bit. Enfield started in Redditch, England, in the 1890s making bicycles. A government contract to produce gun parts led to both the Royal, part of the name and the mad like a gun, slogan. Even before the 20th century started they were making four-wheeled motorized cycle cars, with their first motorized bicycle debuting in 1901. By the 1930s they were a force to be reckoned with, building four-valve singles which were some of the fastest TT racers. In 1949, the Indian Army ordered a large fleet of 350cc Royal Enfields which proved so popular that by 1955 the government of India had built a factory there to make them. When the British motorcycle industry collapsed, the Indian factory just kept right on making the same bikes for the next 50 years, and began exporting them to the United States again in the late 1990s. In 2006, they introduced a much updated 500cc motor, with unit construction and fuel injection, and have been selling various variations of it ever since. The current bikes look, even to people who ride, like a well-preserved bike from 60 years ago. That is their biggest selling point. All the style and street curd of a classic bike with none of the hassle. The low cost of labor in India, and the fact that they still largely do things by hand yields a bike with a fit and finish for the most part you only find on much more expensive bikes like harley davidson's the lettering may be a decal but the fuel tank inside covers are hand striped